Hello everyone, you know who this is. This is Uncle Yankee, the real deal messiah here with you, of course, on this last day, uh, September 30th, 2024 here, and we are going to be looking at what is going on in the tropics. Obviously, uh, before we get into it, I am going to be putting some links uh, in the description of this video in ways to help uh, victims of Hurricane Helene. Uh, I feel like that's what we are going to be doing um, really in the weeks ahead, months, uh, as people are dealing with that. And again, of course, I'm going to say it. My thoughts and my prayers are with people uh, that are living in those areas that are affected by uh, Helene. But nevertheless, we're going to go in and really talk about um, what is going on in the um tropics of course we're going to be watching this system right over here and um we're gonna to have to watch uh for a potential tropical development uh by late this week that ends up pushing into the gulf of mexico and the strength and the track of any tropical system that does develop is extremely uncertain but it seems possible that we could be looking at a sloppy, weaker system this time around. And looking at the current analysis, uh, eventually we do not have uh, the GO-16s uh, from the Tropical Tibet website because it has been down. And um, right now I am going to be using uh, Zoom Earth here and looking at the cloud cover over here and... The disturbance that I am looking at right now for possible uh, tropical development is currently located over the southwestern Caribbean. And this disturbance is very disorganized right now. And the environmental conditions are marginal at best for development. Now, if we look at the wind shear uh, map here, courtesy of the University of Wisconsin, and I will try to draw this out for you guys right here. Um, this is where you're looking at where this tropical cyclone is. It's right over here. And you can see that the wind shear value is at 15 to 25 knots. So um, it is sloppy right now. And the model guidance is here as a whole. Um, it seems to be struggling with their forecast of how much this system might develop here and of course you know these models um a courtesy of tropical tibets dr levi cowan um for giving and thank you for dr levi cowan for giving us this um resource here when it comes to uh the model guidances and what we can use as a tool so i'm gonna start it off here with the gfs uh our system right over here and Let's fast forward it into time. Let's fast forward it into Wednesday morning. You can see our systems right over here. And then by the time we get into Thursday morning, uh, you can see that we do have a, a 1009 millibar system right over here as it crosses into the Gulf of Mexico. But look what happens over here. And... It's still a 1009 by this weekend, and what it's doing here is it's forecasting a weak system that is coming in, and it just dissipates over here. If you look at the other um, runs here, and I do, um, I will tell you the 6Z run. The 6Z run had a hurricane coming in right over here. It just tells you that the why the models are struggling right now and you can see another system of right over here as well so it, it just right now the models like i said are in a mess and that's the the gfs for you on the uh, on the 60s so on the 12z excuse me so now let's look at the canadian and let's also look at the icon and i want to look at those at the same time here so the icon let's fast forward it into uh tuesday still a bit sloppy wednesday 
Thursday, Friday. By the time you get into Saturday, our system is like right over here. And let's get into Sunday and you can see what the Canadian is doing. And I also want to show you what the icon is doing as well, like I said. So the icon, what it's trying to do here is that it is developing the system. And you can see the difference. You know how the Canadian was right over here and then it develops it and then it turns it and it moves up like this look at where the icon is it's right over here and um and continuing it and it has it right where the gulf of mexico obviously this is a, a system that we're also going to be watching but right now that system is going out to sea so you got two models and let me go back to the Canadian and just rewind it here for you two different systems Canadian icon Canadian icon Canadian icon so um, they got a system that ends up strengthening into a tropical storm in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and the Canadian this time around wants to head um, for the Florida Peninsula on Sunday night whereas this system is basically just stalling maybe it does make a turn to the east now the European on the other hand let's look at uh, our friend, the European, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and then, um, so what is the European doing over here? The the European um showing it moving into the northwestern Caribbean by Thursday and then into the Gulf of Mexico by Saturday. Now um the European model and then what it's doing here and let me let me go in and show you uh the wind share. Over here, because what I'm looking at right over here is that this system, it's getting shared out. You see all of this, and let me let me draw this out for you here. All of this right here is wind shear. This is our system right here. Look what happens. It's just getting absolutely beaten down by the share. So that's what you see right here um if i have to say it um more like a shared out depression or low end tropical storm over the eastern gulf of mexico by early next week and then as it goes into florida it just weakens and then the uh the ai last but not least um i'm gonna try to let me see if we can get a whole forecast of the European and um not I'll try to uh explain it right here. So right here at 180, it's showing a very weak and also a shared out tropical system um that hugs the north central and northeastern uh Gulf Coast this weekend and then look by early next week it just heads out now What's really different about this one right here, um, when it comes to, to this storm, the one that we have been seeing here, is that this could make a threat to the lesser, this could make a threat to the, uh, the greater Antilles Islands here, like the, the Virgin Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, maybe Puerto Rico, if it can get far enough, and then look what happens. It just moves up to the north and then up to the northeast. So that one looks like a fish storm right now. So um, too early to speculate. But my 
thoughts on it is that, and I want to get into this, is that um, given the data that I'm looking at right now, um, it seems plausible that we might end up with a very sloppy system that could get to tropical storm strength over the eastern Gulf of Mexico this weekend. Um, that being said, I want to emphasize that even if this system ends up sloppy and not very strong, it could still bring in a lot of moisture and thus heavy rain with flooding. That could be a big problem by this weekend because over um, because a large part of the Florida Peninsula could be getting that. And I'll be zooming that here for you. And the much lower probability scenario is for this system to spin up into an upper level, upper end tropical storm, or even, I'm not going to rule this out because I want to get in and I want to show you the 6Z. So the 6Z did this. And I was very interested by this as well. Uh, It does show a tropical system, but um, also the zero Z as well. I let me see if this is the the model that was showing it. Um, even the zero Z last night was actually showing a hurricane, so that's why you also have to watch out and still consider that this could be a hurricane. And remember. Because her lean was a fast moving system, it didn't weaken the Gulf of Mexico, the waters here, that much. So, uh, this is something that I'll be watching. And it is something that I think has a very low chance of occurring. So, um, the more likely scenario, I have to say, is for a. Uh, low end tropical system forms in the uh, Gulf of Mexico uh, this weekend, heads for the Florida Peninsula later this weekend into early next week. Um, any tropical system that, um, even if it's a depression or a low end tropical storm, those carry a lot of rain. With it, and it's going to impact um, the recovery efforts in the Big Bend area of Florida and along the west coast of Florida as well. And all interests across the Florida Peninsula need to keep close tabs on the progress of the system. Right now, it does have, and let me go into Google Earth back here quickly, it does have a 40% chance of developing. Um, Within the next seven days. It's actually down. Because they actually had this as a 50% chance. So. We'll see what the other model runs do. Uh, later on. But right now. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. We will be looking at. The forecast all week. And hopefully by the time we get into. Uh, the next discussion. Which I'm going to put at for Wednesday. Hopefully we can get those. The Go 16 maps. Um, the satellite imagery is up and running again because we really do need that. Um, they have been down since the, um, they've been down the last couple of days. So, um, like I said, that is, the next video on this is going to be on Wednesday. Hopefully we can get some more information, whether this is going to be a tropical system whether a depression, low-end tropical storm. Um, like I said, this could be a hurricane. It does have a low chance of becoming a hurricane, but we have to wait and see until we can get more information. All right, so till then, guys, enjoy the rest of your Monday wherever you're watching, and I will see you guys back on Wednesday for another weather update. Bye for now, my friends.